Hello everyone, the paper I'm going to present you today is entitled The Inflation and the Unemployment Trade-Off, the Empirical Evidence from G7 Countries and is written by Professor Christian Popescu. For a certain period of time, economists consider that there is a functional relationship between the inflation rate and the unemployment rate in the sense that the full employment causes inflation. This negative relationship known as the Phillips curve, led to many debates and dilemmas not only among scholars, but also between the policymakers starting from 1970s, when the high inflation coexisted with high unemployment. A few researchers investigated the relationship between inflation and unemployment for the G7 states. However, not only the used me uh, research methods are different, but also the findings are dispersed and sometimes ambiguous. Therefore, the uh, paper, um, the present paper, aims to analyze the impact of the economic policy measures on the evolution of inflation and unemployment in G7 countries for the period 1971-2020. In the literature, there are many perspectives regarding the inflation unemployment dilemma. One of the first approaches can be identified in Irving Fisher's study from 1926. By investigating the case of the United States, he found out a high correlation between the rate of price changes and the employment. Some studies, deeply rooted in the Keynesian theory, consider that the policymakers should cope with inflation in order to reduce the workplace conflict and to properly determine the wage for avoiding, avoiding the unemployment. This perspective was largely promoted in the 1960s during the Nixon administration and methodized in Phillips U-shaped curve, focusing his research on United Kingdom's labor market between 1861 and 1957, Phillips regresses the rate of wage inflation against um, the unemployment rate and concludes that there is a negative relation between the wage inflation and unemployment. Similar relationship was found by Samuelson and Solo in the case of the United States economy. Lipsey extended Phillips' approach by using standard statistical techniques meant to eliminate the econometric minuses of the methods used by his predecessor. Lipsey's findings are in line with the results obtained by Phillips, but he mentions that the negative relationship between inflation and unemployment seems unstable in time, indicating the possibility of omitted variables. Therefore, the Phillips curve is nonlinear. Uh, this conclusion was the starting point of further researches. In the end of the 1960s, Milton Friedman, the founder of the monetarist theory, offered a different perspective by introducing a new concept, a natural rate of unemployment. He considered that this natural rate, determined by real factors, can be achieved when expectations are on average realized. Moreover, this rate of unemployment can be maintained at any absolute level of prices or of price changes. Agreeing to Friedman's theory, Phelps argued that no policy can permanently lower unemployment below its natural rate because this will lead to a simultaneous rise in unemployment and inflation. Moreover, Phelps concludes that the Phillips curve is vertical in the long run. Recent studies explain the instability of the Phillips curve with the help of the business cycles and the structural changes of the inflation's dynamics. Uh, some authors underlined on the case of the United States that the relationship between inflation and unemployment is positive during the normal periods, but negative during the phases of the business cycle. Meanwhile, um, others uh, noticed a permanent decline in the inflation in the late 90s, explained through a structural change in the inflation dynamics in the Eurozone. Considering the results of this large amount of the studies, we may argue that the relationship between inflation and unemployment might be unstable and nonlinear. However, this is only one of the uncertainties faced by the empirical researchers investigating the inflation-real activity relation. 
Other uncertainties are related to finding the appropriate variable for tracking the economic activity or to determining if the inflation economic activity relation is permanently varying because of the structural changes from the economy and monetary policy. In order to achieve our purpose, uh, we will use data taken from OECD database for the period 1971 and 2020. The year 1971 was chosen as the beginning of the period because in that moment the inflationary outbreaks triggered by the application of the Keynesian measures aimed at stimulating the effective demand started to appear. The analysis will try to identify the existence and the direction of the nexus between variables both in the short and long term by using causality and cointegration techniques. To avoid the problem of autocorrelation between data, augmented dickley fuller test can be used by adding various lagged dependent variables. Granger causality can be used to analyze the direction of the short-term link between variables. We say that a variable uh, X Granger causes it Y if Y can be better predicted using the history uh, of both X and Y that then it can do it by using only the history of Y. We can say that uh, the two series are co-integrated when the linear combination of two IT processes become an IT-1 process. As Johansson said, cointegration implies common stochastic trend and existence of long-run equilibrium. Empirical results. The variables um, taken into account our unemployment rate, calculated as the number of unemployed persons relative to the civilian active population, and the inflation indicator expressed with the help of consumer price indexes as a percentage change over the same period of the previous year. The normality test shows that the distribution is not normal in the case of the unemployment rate, the value of significance being higher than 0.05 in both tests. For the inflation variable, the distribution is normal. To assess the level of stationarity, the augmented Dickley Fuller test for unit root is applied, taking into account a default number of four legs. Since the series are um, stationary at level one, we will apply the causality test to show the short term link between the variables to see the response of the variables to impulses, this model is constructed and the impulse graphs are generated. Since the series are stationary at level one, we can assume a long run relationship uh, in the model. We apply the cointegration test and uh, the model is uh, generated, uh, which allows the analysis of the relationships between uh, long-term variables. Therefore, the analyzed series are co-integrated at level 1, which shows that there is a link between the inflation rate and the unemployment, noticeable with a gap of a period, in our case one year. This gap supports the Keynesian model according to which stimulating the increase of the employment level by enhancing the actual demand does not implicitly lead to the increase of prices. The results that um, we obtained for um, the evolution of inflation and unemployment for 50 years on G7 group of countries can provide some useful information in thinking the public policy measures. So the existence of a causality that shows that the unemployment rate um, has an influence on the short-term inflation rate 
suggests that taking measures to reduce unemployment that lead to an increase in the money supply can trigger immediate inflationary outbreaks. The fact that there is a cointegration relationship between the two variables analyzed leads us to the conclusion that there is a long-term link between the evolution of the two phenomena, inflation and unemployment. It is reasonable to believe that anti-unemployment measures should be thought of in such a way that they do not involve an immediate um, increase in the money supply and we are referring here to lower interest rates, subsidies, so social assistance, etc. Measures to stimulate demand or supply in order to increase the level of production and thus the employment lead to prices increases. Of course, this research has some limits. Um, we can say that the model is very simplistic and it can be extended in uh, future researches by taking into account some control variables such as interest rate or level of public spending. Thank you very much for your attention.